At long last, we finally get our hands on Warzone 2, and today I'm giving you guys the best settings to make sure we're maximizing our FPS and getting the best visibility possible on Almazra. So let's waste no time and jump straight into the settings, starting with display mode. Full screen borderless or full screen exclusive. The advantages of both here, exclusive means that the game actually gets exclusive priority of your system when it's running and it's actually active on screen. Uh, so it won't be rendering anything in the background. This gives better latency and overall better performance. However, I'd recommend you try out full screen borderless as well because for a lot of people, including myself, I actually really see no difference, even though exclusive in theory should be better. And borderless allows me to alt tab in and out the game and just get an overall smoother experience playing the game as well as multitasking. So I personally use full screen borderless, full screen exclusive might be better for you. Display monitor and display adapter are both self-explanatory. Just make sure you've got the correct monitor and GPU selected. And then screen refresh rate and display resolution. If you've selected borderless, these will be locked. That's why they're locked for me. If you don't have borderless selected so you've got exclusive selected then you'll be able to select these just leave screen refresh rate at auto and then display resolution just set this to your native resolution and what that means is basically the resolution your monitor is so i've got a 1920 by 1080 or a 1080p monitor and so that's what i select here dynamic resolution keep that off aspect ratio just set this to automatic they'll cover it all for you vsync gameplay and menus keep these both off VSync is a massive killer for latency in game, so do not have either of these on. Custom frame rate limit, leave this at custom, then click show more. Gameplay custom frame rate limit, drag it all the way to the right. Then menu custom frame rate limit, leave this at around 100. This way you're still getting some nice smooth frame rate in the menus, but it's not using up as much system resource when it doesn't need to. It's a helpful thing to extend the longevity of your system. And then to push that even further, make sure we've got out of focus custom frame rate limit on around 30. That way when we alt tab out the game and we're doing something uh, in our Google Chrome or just doing something else on our PC, uh, it's not using up loads of uh, resource in the background for absolutely no reason. Restart shader optimization, a very useful little setting where it will re-optimize all your shaders for you. This can be helpful if you're just having you know, you log in one day, you start playing the game and it's lagging all over the place and you've got absolutely no idea why, try and run this as your first option. It might just fix things for you. Shader optimization, this is just a little thing which shows you about the process of shader optimization. It's not a setting, so we're not gonna cover it here. Display gamma, leave this at 2.2 if you are on a monitor and put it to 2.4 if you're playing through a TV. Brightness, I'd recommend you turn this up from the default of 50 up to 55. This will just make the game a, a, bit, a little bit more kind of um, easy to look at. You'll get a lot more visibility in some of those dark areas on the map. And then these last few settings here, constrain mouse to game window and focus mode, not things we care about, so leave them off. And then HDR, even if you've got a HDR monitor, which I don't, and a lot of people don't, just leave it off. It does not help out with visibility. It's meant to make the game's colors and things like that look more realistic and immersive, which isn't what we actually want for Warzone. Moving on to the quality area, quality presets doesn't matter. Um, you can come in here and set it to uh, custom if you want, but it's gonna turn to custom anyway when we start changing everything else. Render resolution, leave this at 100. I'm not gonna go too in detail on the upscaling and sharpening here. Basically in this menu, you can turn this completely off, which I would never recommend, that's never a good option. You've then got four different, um, basically super sampling technologies. I'm not gonna do a video covering the super sampling. This is how you can get some more FPS but it will affect the quality of the game. So I'll need to do some testing on this and do it in another video. But for most people out there, just set this to Fidelity FX CAS. What this is, is a sharpening technique. It's nothing to do with upscaling or super sampling or anything like that. It just sharpens the game. And if we set this to this and then go to show more and go Fidelity FX CAS strength to 75, this is gonna give you a really nice sharp quality game. For anti-aliasing, I'm gonna actually leave this as a personal preference because there are advantages to both. Both. The SMAA T2X option uh, is a less intensive form of anti-aliasing, but it's a bit more rough around the edges than Filmic SMAA T2X, which is a bit smoother, but when combined with the sharpening we've done here, it makes the game still looks really nice and sharp with no jagged edges. So basically try both of these out and see which one works out personally for you. Then for anti-aliasing quality, I'd recommend you go to normal. This gives you a really big benefit in terms of FPS over high or ultra quality. Unfortunately, I just find that the low setting looks really really bad in game so I recommend you'd keep this at normal because the FPS you gain from low is very minimal and you lose a lot of that visibility and fidelity in the game then video memory scale max this all the way out so we're using as much VRAM as possible for the game 
into details and textures. Texture resolution, I'd recommend that most people go on low. Very low textures look horrific and they don't really gain you anything in terms of FPS. Whereas low textures, to me personally and to a lot of other people who I've consulted with about these settings and talked to, a lot of my friends, um, they also agree that low textures still look great. They don't have the same sharpness of normal and high, but they look decent enough and gain you the FPS. Then texture filter anisotropic, put this all the way up to high. This really helps when you're looking at textures or surfaces uh, at a, a different angle to straight on. So you're not looking directly at a wall, you're looking at the floor from an angle. Makes the textures look a lot better and it uses no extra performance really. You don't use any FPS, which is awesome. We like settings like that. Then for nearby level of detail and distant level of detail, you can put these both on high as well. Uh, the assumption probably would have been that these would have had a decent effect on uh, FPS or performance, but they have absolutely no effect on performance. Then clutter draw distance. This is an interesting one where we do want to actually put this on short. Turning down the uh, draw distance of these kind of things, especially things like ground foliage, can actually be very, very helpful in a game like Warzone, where you might be seeing someone from a long distance away and you want to get rid of the clutter, which is covering up your vision of the enemy. That's why I decided to put this on short rather than long. The performance benefits aren't massive, but it helps out with the overall visibility and improving your gameplay. Then particle quality, leave this on high. The high particles look considerably better than the low ones and you lose pretty much no FPS from having these turned up. It's a massive difference between low and high. Then particle quality level, we wanna put this on low. Not very low, this is kind of similar to the texture resolution where very low looks horrific, but low looks pretty much just as good as high and we gain FPS from turning it down. Bullets impact and sprays, personal preference, no effect on performance, so don't worry about it. Shader quality, this one has a pretty big effect on performance. Um, it affects how lighting uh, works on certain surfaces. It's kind of quite selective and you really don't realize that it's changing a lot of the time between going and going between high and low, but you gain a considerable amount of FPS, so turn this down. Tessellation, turn that off. Uh, it's a superfluous effect that um, it makes things look nice, but it doesn't really add anything to the game in terms of visibility, uh, and it provides a slight performance boost by turning it off. Then terrain memory, most people should be able to just turn this onto max. The only people who might struggle to run this on max are people who potentially don't have over eight, or, or at least at least eight gigs of RAM. Uh, if you don't have at least eight gigs of RAM, which most people with gaming PCs or laptops have these days, then I'd recommend you actually turn this to min. But for all of us guys with eight or above, put this on max and you gain a nice little performance benefit. On-demand texture streaming, this actually has no effect on the performance of the game. However, turning this on, means that you allocate 24 gigabytes of your hard drive to these high quality textures that you really don't need. And it says that it downloads high quality textures as you play the game, which to me just does not sound like a useful thing. The end result isn't useful and the process of downloading during the game is definitely not useful. So keep this off. Then streaming quality, keep this on low. This pretty much doesn't look like it does anything to the visibility or the fidelity of the game. The actual look of the game is exactly the same running low or medium, um, or normal I mean, but there is a slight performance gain that you get from turning this down. So not really sure what this is doing, it's just free FPS, so, so turn this low. Then volumetric quality, we want this also on low. This is quite a big one. Volumetric quality is, is uh, the, the uh, quality of fog and how light goes through uh, kind of smoke and foggy areas. I've actually found that turning this to low makes visibility easier in the game. It makes things less foggy than having this on high. So this is a performance benefit and a visibility benefit by turning this to low. Then we've got a couple of settings here which we just wanna turn off. So deferred physics quality and water core sticks. Both of these are just not useful. They are once again superfluous. We don't really care about them, so just turn them off. Then shadow map resolution. This goes pretty similarly with the uh, texture resolution that I talked about earlier. Very low, looks horrible, really, really bad. Um, and turning it up to low basically gives you nice sharp shadows, but you get a performance benefit. So this is the really nice happy medium. Very low technically would give you a little bit more FPS, but the shadows look, but you, you do not want to put it on very low, I'm, I'm telling you. Then screen space shadows, we want to turn these 
off. Then shadow or spot shadow quality, we want to put this on low. A lot of these shadows we're going to be turning down because they help out a lot by turning them down. Spot cache, put this on medium. Uh, this has a decent effect on uh, your VRAM usage, as you can see to the right here. And that in turn gives you more FPS by turning this down. Then particle lighting, we want this on low. Not much difference turning up to ultra in terms of how they actually look, um, but a little bit more performance gain to be had. Then ambient occlusion. This is all to do with the shadows, uh, kind of around smooth edges uh, of, of things. So like this forklift here, you can see when we turn this up, the shadows become a bit more pronounced, whereas the image here looks a bit more flat. But ambient occlusion is a pretty solid FPS killer when we start turning it up. So for most people, I would just say, turn it off. Then screen space shadows and static reflection quality. Put these on off and low, followed by weather grid volumes at off. These are all extra nice settings to have on, which don't help performance in any way and don't help with visibility or fidelity either. Kind of confusing why we need to have this many random settings in, but these are the kind of things we just turn off. And then coming to the end of the quality section, we've got NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. I've covered this quite a few times in previous videos, but basically to explain what this is, you want this on on or on plus boost. If you have a strong GPU and a weaker CPU in general situations, then on the plus boost will be your better option. However, if you've got kind of an equal uh, CPU and GPU in terms of power, in terms of uh, age, in terms of generation, then on will be the better option. Um, but what I always recommend is because a lot of people won't know exactly which situation they're in is to actually just try out a game with on, try out a game with on plus boost and just compare and see which one actually helps the most. In a lot of situations, you won't see that much difference. So um, on or on plus boost are going to be helpful. But I thought I'd give you guys the explanation to try and base your opinion on. Just make sure you've not got this off because this does help nicely with input latency. Then these last four options, depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain. We want these all off or on zero because they are horrible settings that cloud your vision in game completely and uh, are meant to make the game look cinematic or whatever, but we don't want that for Warzone whatsoever. And the last section here, we are into field of view. Weirdly, uh, having field of view turned up in this game actually helps FPS. In the past, I've always recommended that you put this to max anyway, but it can have a slight effect on performance because there's more being rendered on screen. But it seems like for some reason in this game that when you turn down your FOV and therefore uh, objects in the middle of your screen become bigger, it actually becomes harder for the game to render it and you get less FPS. So actually turn this all the way to the right, getting that maximum amount of FOV and maximum amount of information, which is great, that also gives you FPS. So it's a no brainer, put it on 120. Then ADS field of view, leave this at affected. If you've got this at independent, you need to change this. It's probably one of the most important settings to reduce a bit of that visual recoil. What this does is it makes it so that when you scope in with your gun and you're not using something like a 3.25 or above or a sniper scope, uh, then your FOV when you're scoped in will be actually affected by the increased FOV you set up here. And it means that the gun ends up looking like it's further away from your face. And then when it starts shaking when you shoot, it doesn't look like it shakes as much which is really, really helpful to stay on target. Then weapon field of view, I've still been doing a bit of testing with this. I've tried out all three and to me, default, just leaving it as it is, feels the best. But I'm gonna try playing with the, uh, these a bit more over a longer span of games and actually give a maybe more of a detailed opinion in a different settings video in the future because I'm still not completely sure. It's more of a personal preference thing here. I leave it at default. Then third person field of view, I don't really play much third person in the multiplayer, so I'm not gonna bother covering this. And vehicle field of view, just leave it at default. I don't find any advantage to having it further out. And then lastly, camera. First person and third person, you may as well change both of them. Uh, camera movement, put these on least. This way, when explosions and stuff happen around from uh, a multitude of things in game, uh, you get less camera shake, which is helpful to improve that visibility. Third person ADS transition, doesn't matter because we're not playing third person. And then default spectator camera, I would recommend you put this on game perspective. The helmet camera looks kind of crap. I don't know why you want that, but if you die in game and want to spectate teammates, uh, game perspective is the best way to actually see what they're doing. Nothing to do with performance, but a saying which I truly believe is important to, to have on because the helmet camera is just terrible. And that, guys, is all of these settings covered for Warzone 2. 
And that, guys, is all of the settings covered for Warzone 2. An in-depth video there. I like to cover the settings as in-depth as possible, and I know that you guys get a lot out of it because you guys actually understand what the settings are, what they're doing, and why we're setting them. If you want just a quick overview, this is not the video for that. It never is. I like to cover things in detail. Anyway, guys, if you are excited for Warzone 2 like I am, and you want to see more content, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps me out because I get to see that you guys are interested in the content and you want to see more and you want to stick around for it. Also, leave a like on this video and share it out to as many people as possible so we can all get the best performance uh, from these settings in Warzone 2. Thanks very much, guys. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.